I bet you thought covalent bonding was simple and you knew everything about it, didn't you? Surprise! Here is another type of covalent bonding. Um, this is a really, really nice one. If you think about it, it's quite logical, quite um, a sensible expansion from the, the simple ones that we've been able to draw before. Um, and it's one that comes up a lot in tests and exams. So you need to be able to come with the examples in here. You need to be able to apply what you've learned from the examples in here and take them and apply them to other things as well. So I really, this is one of my favourite videos. I really, really like this. It's really simple. It's really elegant, it's really logical. Good luck, guys. Covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons between non metals, and traditionally, each element is going to contribute equally. So, here we have the bonding in oxygen. Each oxygen has contributed two electrons to the double bond down the middle. Now, that is not the case in dative or coordinate covalent bonding. Here are four compounds I'm going to show you how to draw. If you want to try and do these first before watching the video, feel free, but be warned they are quite tricky. When we draw ammonia, which is NH3, ammonia, nitrogen, sorry, has five electrons on its outer shell, and then hydrogen has one electron on its outer shell, and each contributes equally to this bond in here. But you'll see there's this pair of electrons up the top here that aren't really doing very much. And occasionally what will happen is that a hydrogen ion will come along. Now if we just pause for a second and think about what a hydrogen ion is. It is hydrogen has one proton and one electron. If it loses that electron, it's just a proton and it has two spaces in its outer shell. Now conveniently, hydrogen has two electrons there. So now these two electrons can circle around this hydrogen quite happily. It still has the positive charge because when it joined in the, the compound, it didn't bring any electrons with it. It was just a proton that was added on. So now this hydrogen didn't contribute any electrons to this bond here. They both came from the nitrogen, but now the hydrogen can use these electrons to circle around. And we draw this in a special way. We have our nitrogen with its three um, traditional bonds connecting to the hydrogen. And then we draw the last one with an arrow to indicate that um, the electrons in this bond came from the nitrogen. And then we have our overall positive charge as well. A similar thing can happen to water and turn it into a hydroxonium ion. If we have, again, a hydrogen ion, a proton coming in, and seeing that spare pair of electrons that's hanging around the oxygen, either spare pair of electrons, this hydrogen, which decides it would like some electrons, is just going to pop itself on there and become a hydroxonium ion. And again, we can draw that with our sticks to represent our traditional bonds and then our arrow to represent our dative bond, showing that all of the electrons in this bond here came from the oxygen and that the hydrogen didn't contribute any bonds, any electrons to this bond. Carbon monoxide is getting slightly trickier now. So we have carbon and we have oxygen. Carbon has four electrons on its outer shell and oxygen has six electrons on its outer shell. Carbon is going to donate two and keep two for itself. And then oxygen is going to donate four electrons to the bonding in the middle and keep two for itself. So carbon monoxide is actually two traditional bonds and then one dative bond and the arrow of the bond shows the direction of electron giving so that the oxygen gave the electrons to the carbon. It wasn't a fair, a fair swap in this case. Our last one here, nitric acid, it is a nasty one, but if you want to take your chemistry studies further, we need to be able to cope with things like this. So we have hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, oxygen, and oxygen. 
Between the hydrogen and the oxygen, we are just going to have one bond. Oxygen has six electrons on its outer shell. It's just got a single bond between the nitrogen and the oxygen. And we do nitrogen with a little triangle. Um, and then nitrogen is going to form a double bond to this oxygen down here, where it's going to contribute two electrons two more to make up the five um, and that's the five around oxygen now this oxygen down here double bonds so we need four electrons in total oxygen has six electrons but it wants eight now it has eight oxygen this one over here has six electrons but it wants eight so it's just going to tag on to these two square electrons from the nitrogen and that there is going to be our dative bond so we can redraw that with the dative bond being shown in there, like that. Um, that is a slightly tricky one to work out. Um, it is a process of logic, it is a process of trial and error sometimes, but I would expect you to be able to work out tricky ones.